So welcome back to this interview series on uh, the Tracentis Tosca Automation Tool. So we are going to discuss another interesting question which uh, you might face during your Tosca interviews. Now, this particular question is about the Tosca extension. Now, as you know, uh, Tosca always works uh, with a browser extension. Using this browser extension, uh, Tosca can interact with uh, your web applications across different browsers. So every browser uh, has a different extension uh, and you need to download this extension and then install it in order to automate your web applications. So this particular question uh, is kind of little tricky uh, and you may not always face this question if uh, you are appearing for an interview where um, it requires less amount of experience uh, in Tosca. But if you are an experienced uh, Tosca tester and you have been involved um, in setting up Tosca in your uh, company, then uh, you might be already aware of this uh, because these are the issues which you might face uh, when you are trying to set up um, a Tosca infrastructure in your own company. So whenever you go for an interview, they might have faced uh, this particular issue or they might be facing this particular issue uh, and they might come up with this question uh, to know what would be your approach when uh, you face this kind of issue. So as I said, uh, this is not a generic scenario. Uh, you will not face this uh, when you are trying to install it uh, on a local machine because you have got all the rights and uh, you have got all the permissions uh, to download uh, any particular extension and then install it in your browser. But uh, that is not the case uh, when you work uh, in an enterprise uh, environment. So you don't always have uh, the luxury of downloading uh, anything on your browser and installing anything on your browser. So there are some restrictions in place whenever you are working uh, in an enterprise environment. You um, either have to uh, request different teams to do this for you, or you have to go around uh, some security protocols in order to download and install some extensions. And sometimes it may be possible that you are not at all allowed to download and install a Tosca extension. And that is where this question will come, is how do you install Tosca extension uh, without downloading from the browser, right? So are there any ways to do this? Now, uh, if you are going to answer this particular question, you should uh, try to answer all the different options which are available uh, to install Tosca extension manually. And then you can present uh, with the best possible option according to you, uh, depending on the circumstances, uh, obviously. So let's look at all the three different options which are basically available when you want to uh, install your Tosca extension manually. So the first option uh, is to add the extension via developer mode. So whenever you are putting in this option, you should also explain um, what are the steps you have to take in order to add or install this extension via the developer mode. Now this developer mode has to be turned on uh, on the browser. And then you can add the extension for the browser uh, in your Chrome extensions uh, using that particular file once you have enabled the developer mode. So where you will get uh, the browser extension? Now this particular extension uh, is available uh, in your Tosca Commander home directory under tbox folder. So you will find uh, the respective uh, extensions for your browser. For example, for Chrome, it will be uh, the .crx file. And then once you have enabled the developer mode, you can browse and add that particular file into your Chrome extension. And then once you restart the browser, your extension will be installed. So that is how you can add the extension manually by enabling the developer mode on the browser. Now, uh, the next option, which uh, can also be used uh, is via the tbox start program. However, there are some constraints to this particular method. So in this particular method, what we can do is we can use the tbox start program module, and then uh, we can, uh, first of all, unzip the particular uh, extension file. Again, uh, that is present in your Tosca Commander home directory. You can um, unzip that file, and then, and then uh, using the tbox start program, you can start the Chrome or any particular 
browser exe and then we need to add a particular argument uh, in this particular module uh, which is to load the extension we need to provide the extension path okay so that will basically um, load your extension every time you run your test so this could be like a precondition a step where you load the extension but the only uh, problem in this particular way is uh, every time you run this and you close your browser the extension will be gone okay so once the test has ended uh, the extension will be removed but uh, you can always put this uh, as a library and you can use it as a predefined step so that your extension is always loaded before you run any particular test and then it could be removed so in some scenarios uh, this could be the best possible solution uh, but if you want your extension to be always present, then the first option could be a more reliable. Now, the last option, which is available, is a little more complicated uh, in terms of uh, the infrastructure or the things uh, which are required. So this is uh, where you need to self-host your extension on your web server, right? So there are particular requirements uh, before you go ahead and do this. You need a web server. Uh, which can host your particular extension. You need uh, the ID and the version of your uh, Chrome extension. And then you need the ability to distribute your extension, either using uh, the Windows group policies um, or the registry keys. Okay, so these are the three different requirements uh, which needs to be fulfilled if you want to go down this particular path. Now, next, uh, what are the steps uh, to do or perform this particular step. So first uh, we need to uh, host our extension on the server. So we will take the directory of our particular extension, which is again present in our commander home directory. And we have to put it on our web server from where we can host this, okay? So once uh, we host the extension, then uh, we also need to host a particular uh, manifest file now, this manifest file is an XML file, which we need to put on the web server. And uh, it will contain uh, the ID and the version of your Chrome extension. The next thing which we need to do is we need to distribute it uh, across using the web server. So we can do this using the Windows group policies, or uh, we can use the registry keys. So as I said, uh, it's a little more complicated when you compare it with the previous two steps uh, and it requires a lot of uh, things. Also, uh, it requires a lot of knowledge on uh, your Windows server side. So to wrap up this particular answer, you can always give a recommended option. Now this recommended option uh, can be from the first option or the second option. It always depends on the requirements of the project. So it's very important that you ask the interviewer uh, of how their project looks like, what are the requirements of that particular project where they want to run uh, that Tosca. So uh, depending on uh, the project requirements, then um, you can provide the best possible option. So this is how you can answer uh, this particular uh, technical question. Uh, which is about the Chrome extension. As I said, it's not a very generic question, but uh, you can expect uh, this tricky question uh, in some technical interviews which you face, and especially when you are an experienced uh, tester. So they will expect you to come up uh, with a particular solution when you are given this problem, which is um, not very common, but it uh, is also very uh, apparent when you are working in an enterprise architecture. So hopefully this was helpful. I'm always looking out for your feedback uh, and comments. So keep putting them on. I have also provided a KV article link uh, in the description where you can find detailed steps on how you can perform uh, each of this step if you want to manually load this particular extension in your um, server or your machine. So that's it for now, uh, until uh, I'm back with another interesting question in this particular series. So keep watching and keep learning.